Hello, I'm Entrelysium and welcome to a little tutorial for From the Depths. So From the Depths is a game which I really like, but I found it difficult to get into as well. And a lot of people have said this to me, that it's a game that they really want to get into. They've seen me play it and they're like, I really want to get into it. But there's just this learning curve. And I agree, there is a learning curve to it. And you know what? I want to try and help out with that because it's a game I really enjoy. So we're going to go in and we're going to do a few little videos on things that people are having problems with. So for a start, we're going to start with engines because engines are... Kind of important. Every every crafted from that has them. So I'm not gonna go over the uh, controls too much. There is like a video that plays in game. You can be like, I want to play with the mouse control, the keyboard. I recommend keyboard over mouse. Mouse is like Minecrafty type. Keyboard is a bit more powerful. Uh, not as intuitive because it's not like a control scheme to use anywhere else. But I do recommend you use keyboard. And when you get to select between your controls, when you first load up the game, there will be a video you can play. I recommend you play that. It's a very good video. It just tells you what the controls are. It should be good. I mean, if people are having problems with controls, let me know down below and I will uh, go over the controls in the video, maybe. But I will say them as we go along. So, there are three different modes. Campaign, which is like a strategy and building thing, and you have to fight enemy forces. You have to collect resources to build the stuff to fight enemy forces. Story, which you do little challenges, like you have to fight this force and you can take your own craft in or use the pre-built. Don't use the pre-built, they're awful. Or vehicle designer, which is basically a sandbox with infinite resources. We're going to launch the vanilla designer. Ah, yes, I'm going fast because I don't want to get to the engine, really. This is a raft. That is a beacon over there. We're just going to build on the little raft today. So I'm going to get stand over here, look the other way, and press B. And for simplicity's sake, because this rocking is going to get annoying, I'm going to press Caps Lock. This works in the vehicle designer. It does not work anywhere else. Caps Lock allows you to levitate things and have them sort of fixed rotation upright. So E to open up the... Uh, materials and building blocks thing it makes sense right e for that yeah engine block engine block is like the mother hub of an engine now there are a couple of types of engine electrical engine but electrical engine basically creates power from batteries batteries are charged by a generator generator charges the batteries via a normal hydrocarbon petrol engine so let's just assume that our petrol engines are what we're going to use today I, i've never really bothered with electrical engines I, I don't see the point unless you've maybe used them as like some sort of docking craft that has to be like a little drone that flies away from the mothership and has to dock for more power but i can just see that going wrong so i'm just going to use engines everywhere so that's a nice little engine block we have there and you notice that it's got this arrow coming out of it that's the direction you want to put the crankshaft put the crankshaft down you can put like multiple down we're going to put uh three because I'm standing in the fourth space. Then, from the crankshaft, you get to cylinder. You might notice that there's a sort of a tree going on here. Engine to crankshaft, crankshaft to cylinder, cylinder to exhaust or carburetor, carburetor to supercharge and engine and fuel tank. Let's put our cylinder down. Now, normally you'd be like, I'm going to place cylinders all over the place. I'm just going to place the one for the moment. So we have 1.21 maximum power output. Okay, let's watch that rise. Now, we could place an exhaust currently as the game exists. I'm not going to use an exhaust because exhausts are actually pretty crap. Um, an exhaust is about the same as an engine and fuel tank, except for the fact that if you put a carburetor next to a cylinder instead of an exhaust, a carburetor can attach to many more things, and that means many more engine and fuel tanks. So they're far more efficient than using an exhaust. So we're going to go carburetor. I mean, notice that we could put carburetors like all over the place. I'm just going to put one for the moment for the tutorial, though. Here is our carburetor. Edda, edda, a, a. Anyway, um, engine and fuel tank. Get ready. 2.31. We've doubled our power. Let's put a supercharger on. 4.51. We've doubled our power again. So you notice that we're actually getting quite a lot of power here. So to go for an efficient design, you want to basically have about a 3 to 2 ratio of engine and fuel tanks to carburetors. Uh, so to, sorry, to uh, superchargers. Unfortunately, we only have four connections, so 3 to 1 we'll have to do. And notice we're up to 11.1 power. And of course, if we had more carburetors all over the place like this, you could put more engine and fuel tanks down. And then if we got superchargers and made sure that they were all connected with the right ratio, 3 to 2, 2 to 1, 3 to 1, 2 to 1, we're up to... 155.21 power. That is quite a lot for such a tiny, tiny engine. Literally a one-cylinder engine. That is insane. Now, that power will run many, many, many propellers. Um, 
I don't think we need to worry about power on this thing. Now, of course, normally you'd build the mirrored so you'd have like a cylinder here, cylinder here. You put carburetors here, 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 here. Or I could not delete the floor. Oops. Here and here. By the way, I'm copying using R, so just go over something and press R, you'll copy it. Um, Wazda, move around. Alt goes down, space goes up. Um, yeah, but I'm not going to go over anything more in detail. You notice that our power output is now up to 208. Power output for, for engines is exponential. Engines are an exponential function. And that means that the bigger you make your engine, you'll get much, much more power. So two engines that are, say, one size will produce much less power than one engine, which is two size. So generally, there's no point to have multiple engines. Generally, you just want a bigger engine. Multiple engines do have the bonus of being like a redundancy. So if you look, lose an engine, you've still got one engine. But in general, you kind of just want to go with one massive engine because it is so much more efficient. I mean, you notice that this engine is already creating 208 power. And this is not a good design for an engine. A good design for an engine would be more symmetrical. It would have, you know, far more cylinders probably. It would have engine-owned fuel tanks all over the place because currently these carburetors do not have any. So if we would put stuff like this... And there. You'd also want to put some superchargers on. I'm only really doing this very, very quickly and very roughly for these superchargers. This is not, you know, the ideal uh, place to put superchargers. Uh, let's put a supercharger on there and we'll turn you back. I think this actually might... 3 to 1, 2 to 1, 3 to 1. Yeah, actually, this is actually a pretty good engine. Surprise, surprise. And we're up to 620 power. For this, this little engine, this little engine, I mean, it's not little in terms of the, the star raft, but it's little in comparison to, say, a capital ship. This creates 620 power. That is probably plenty of power unless you're running something like shields or lasers. That's really insane. Now, to run a hydrocarbon-y, petroly, gas-based engine, it's not gas. I know the Americans call it gas, but I just want to kind of make sure that people understand that it's not a gas, it's a liquid. Um, this is like a diesel or petrol engine. You want to have a fuel. So currently, if you look down the bottom right, you'll see we've got 853 power. I'm not quite sure where the rest of that power is coming from, since this only creates 620. Probably something to do with using the starter raft. I probably shouldn't have done that. But uh, this allows us to try and build it you know, actually provide it with fuel, because it needs fuel. And if you look above that, it says, little fuel tank, zero. We have no fuel. So let's go resources, fuel storage tank, and we'll place a few storage tank, and bam, we now have a thousand fuel. So this fuel will power this engine. When we run out of fuel, we're dead. Well, we're dead in the water. If we build a fuel processor, however, oil use per second, 10. Fuel created per second, 100. Power usage, 20. 20 power is basically nothing to us. This will allow us to create fuel out of... Crude oil. Crude oil is one of the base results in the game. If you look down in the middle bottom of the screen, it says infinite in five different places. The middle one is like a fuel barrel. That is our raw oil. With infinite raw oil in the vehicle designer, and even in the campaign, you have basically like so much. It is something you tend to have quite a lot of. This will take 20 power. It will use that power to create fuel. That fuel will then feed the engine. The engine will provide power to make more fuel, which will create power to create more fuel. And we'll still have plenty, plenty of power left. So... That's basically your starter engine in from the depths. Now, I do always think that most craft really should have a fuel processor because it allows them to basically go forever and be independent, provided you have the oil to do so. That would be my advice. So, yeah, all that we're going over today is this basic engine design. Uh, it's, you know, it's one of the things that basically yeah, your sub, your plane, your boat, everything will have an engine. Um, pretty much everything will have an engine. So if there's anything else you're stuck on particularly, do let me know below. I will try and do some very basic tutorials on, you know, a number of different things to help people get started, uh, because I did find it pretty hard to get started myself in this game. Um, but yeah, if you'd like, please remember to like, and not subscribe, please consider subscribing. And remember, you know, if you're something you are stuck on, or you want feedback on, or want help with, do let me know below, uh, and I will try and make a beeline for that. So, uh, yeah. Until next time, though. Stay shiny.